Welcome one and all, it's Vital, and let's talk live streaming for musicians and how exactly to reach your fans at home. So on behalf of the Ditto Music team, let's break it down. Getting the right tools, where to stream, deciding a premise, going live with other artists and influencers, the length of broadcasts, planning and promoting beforehand, watching for copyright flags, time to monetize and test and review. So here what, check out the markers, the chapters, the timestamps below, and if you wanna skip to where you need in that video, you can do that. If not, sit back, enjoy, and take note. Cool, a little bit of housekeeping. Before we start, if you haven't already, I'm gonna need you to subscribe to the Ditto Music YouTube channel. I'm gonna need you to hit like, hit that notification bell so you do not miss a single video. And remember to comment below for anything that you find interesting, any general chit chat, or if you need any help or support, we'll definitely be in the comments. Well, I'll be in the comments. You'll see me there, I promise. I promise. All right, let's do this. And so first things first, you're gonna have to get the right tools. We're talking external mics, external lenses, tripods, and getting the lighting perfect. So depending on what you have or what you're able to invest, you may just have a phone, a smartphone, and hopefully if you've got one in the last five years, it's gonna have a great camera. We're talking 720, 1080p at minimum, and you should be able to play with the camera settings so you can get the best visual for your live stream audience. So here's a bad example, and here's a good example. Just like this. <laughs> So with that said, what you'll need to do is marry the good quality visual with a good quality audio. So if you can invest into a microphone, something for your phone, your camera, your recording device, here's a few examples if you're using your phone. So on the left is a lavalier mic and on the right is a compact shoe mount mic. And then here are three examples of mics that go directly into your phone, all at different price ranges. Two being lightning, there are variations for Android and also one for the AUX. And here's a few examples that you would use with your camera, especially if it's a DSLR, a mirrorless, a compact camera, or anything with a plug-in microphone port. Ideally, you want a small but powerful microphone with great quality. Overall, the ones that I just suggested do not need any external battery, so it's taking all the power from your camera or from your phone. So next, we're looking at external lenses. This this isn't necessarily something that you need to have but if you're thinking about it a lot of people are doing live streams so if you can have a little bit of an edge anything of focus maybe a fisheye lens or a close-up lens or something really wide to kind of capture the whole background and you're in there moving around left and right and it's catching you from all different places people want to see and people want to see more so if you can offer them a little bit more they will take it they're more likely to stay there if they can see a lot more going on in the camera there's a link in the description if you want to see a few of the microphones or the lenses that I've suggested they're just anything that's a bit unique and different different will add value to your live stream. So next we're talking about tripods and you'll need at least one tripod, a full standing tripod, a gorilla tripod, or maybe something like a simple desk tripod. Like right now I'm using a desk tripod to film this video and I'll show you an example. And the video I created last week, I was using a full standing tripod. One thing to always do is to experiment with the backgrounds of where you're gonna put that tripod and where it's gonna face. And we'll get onto that in a little bit when we speak about lighting. I mean, the whole point of a tripod is to get a good shot. You want it steady, you want it clean, and you want it perfectly framed. And most importantly, you want your hands free. It'll really benefit you if you're doing the whole live yourself. A tripod gives you all the help and support of someone else literally holding the camera for you or operating the camera for you. And like I said, last but not least, this one's for all the people out there that love to take selfies. I gotta admit I'm that guy still. I've turned into that guy, but yeah, anyway, let's get into it. This one's all about lighting. Lighting in any space for any camera operator, director, videographer is probably the most important part about setting up a whole scene or a set. It's all about getting the best outcome and lighting plays a big part in that. Where there's natural light, it's best to utilize that if you can, but sometimes you may need to invest and get a little bit of a studio light. It could be a photography light, it could be a simple, cheap video light. I do say though, I think it's so important, the more light, the better, in the sense of the more light you have to utilize the more you can make a great image out of a potential low level camera or low level lens and with the lighting itself you can help create different dynamics for example if you look over there on the right side of me there's a nice simple sofa you might not tell you might tell but there's a little light leaking from the back and that's to help with the ambience and the whole feel of the video and then over this side I've got a ring light and that's something that I'll use for my live streams so that's something else you can utilize if you don't have all the equipment you can buy something like that for around 20 pound it's got a ring light on it it changes colors it does all kind of cool stuff and on top of that you can 
set your phone in there. So we're trying to keep price to a minimum if we need to, but we can always invest and get more. So I think that's a good starting point. And one thing to add, please do not simply buy a light and put it bang in your face. That will flush out your skin. That might make you look oversaturated, too bright, and people won't be able to see you as clear. Sometimes it's about utilizing the shadows. Right now, I've got a light on this side of me and it's touching this side of my face very lightly. There's a little bit of dark over here, but it's having a nice contrast. Like I said, I got the lights in the back. It really brings up the whole image and the visual for anyone who's watching. So once you got yourself set with the right tools, you framed it up, you're ready to go. It's all about going live for your first broadcast. Places to go live. Where can you go live exactly? Facebook, Instagram, YouTube. Don't get me wrong, you can go live on things like Ustream, Twitch, even Twitter itself, but currently you have to work with wherever your fans are and wherever the niche and the need is for you to go live. I do feel for a lot of people, Instagram is the most simplest way to do it. Facebook gives you a lot more metrics so you can kind of play around, but let's get into those a little bit. So firstly, talking about Instagram, it can be a little bit timid, okay? And when I say timid, you might go on live for the first time and no one's there for the first four or five minutes and then you get two or three and they go in and out. The trick is to treat it almost like a show, like a stage. You're not gonna wait for people, you're just gonna attack them straight away. You're gonna let people know, listen, I'm here, even if nobody's there yet, I'm here, I've got this to promote, I wanna talk to you. Anyone that pops up, you big them up, you say, hey, how you doing? My name is Vital, what's good people? Hey, big up your chest, whatever it might be. You know what I'm gonna say? You just say what you say and you keep people engaged the whole entire time. Because the focus really is that Instagram wants people to go on live, so they will push that content to more and more people utilizing their algorithm. And all that's gonna really do for you is have a positive impact on reaching more fans or more potential fans at least. When you go live on Instagram, Instagram will send the majority of your followers a notification. This notification will say, hey, Vital's on live, come check him out. The thing is, it's probably better to kind of let people know you're going live before Instagram does that. If people already know that you're going live and they know why you're going live, because you send out different posts on stories, on IGTV, on your feed, on other social networks, if they know you're going live on a specific time on Instagram, when they now get that second notification, what there happens is people will know that you're live officially now you've told them already they're more likely to stay there click on and at least wait as well and it's the thing trying to get people to stay on consistently is a hard situation unless you have really engaging content unless you are controversial unless you do something to let them know why they're staying there or you promoted previously so they know that they're staying there for a reason the second aim here is after your live streams are concluded it's important i feel because any message that you've said within your live you want people to know about who didn't actually have time or get to see the live so you have an opportunity it's a very small window after that live Instagram asks you do you want to share as an IGTV so definitely you're gonna say yes and then secondly you want to keep it on your main profile because you also have the option of leaving it just on IGTV's feed or also on your main feed so you want to keep it on your main feed you want the views and the engagement to grow after the live streams done so when you do upload this piece of content that you created on your live stream to your IGTV and your main feed you're gonna want to give it a nice title something worth eye-catching but not too clickbaity something that allows people to know what's happening and what it is for those who didn't get any promotion, for those who didn't get a notification, for those who haven't seen the live, to allow them to want to go see this new piece of content, especially if it's 10 minutes, 20 minutes, 30 minutes, an hour. They need a reason why they're even gonna click something as long as that. But if it's something that you do weekly, monthly, or even daily, then you're gonna wanna keep the title in a similar space, but you wanna keep it consistent. You wanna have the title of what it is, what episode it is, what show it is, what number it is, so people know where they are. In case they've missed one or two, they know they can actually go back to the previous shows or episodes and stay engaged and stay up to date and here's a little side note while you're actually on live it's very important to try and get that content to be shared while you're actually giving off that content that information and and building that engagement in the live there's two ways you can do it you can actually do it yourself so while you're talking and doing your thing you can press the share button in the live and share it to as many people as you want but the only thing is that can get a little distracting if you're actually talking doing something that requires your full attention so what i will say is while you're in the lives get your supporters your fans and the people that are popular in say can you share it to two or three people nothing too strenuous but an easy task for anyone to do to share it to their top three people what then happens is you start getting support as an engagement from people that you originally didn't have any kind of link or contact to and that's just literally through your core followers and the people that engage with you the most next so secondly Facebook obviously Facebook and Instagram are quite similar in certain spaces and it's much like Instagram in fact for example when you go live on Facebook the majority of your followers or friends will get a notification say that you are actually live right now so come 
lock in but you have a greater opportunity here because when you are live on Facebook whether it's your phone your tablet or your computer you can do a lot more and see a lot more you're not stuck in the app like how you are in Instagram so the opportunity you have here really is to create something like an event and at this event say I'm live streaming at a certain time get loads of people to say that they're coming that they're going almost like it's a live show but the difference is it is but it's just online and you're gonna want to give yourself a lot of time to promote this so again when you do go live you've got people coming from the event you've got people coming from the notifications you've got people just seeing it and watching it as they log into Facebook bear in mind Facebook and Instagram do prioritize the lives over the story so they will always be at the top and first so doing a live regularly will definitely get you more awareness and more engagement but obviously it's always about coming with good content because at the end of the day you being live all the time doesn't mean anything if you're not saying or doing anything you know what I mean last but definitely not least we're going to talk about going live on YouTube so YouTube has a massive potential for live streaming to fans at home but it has a little bit of a drawback so if you're just starting out you'll actually need to get a thousand subscribers before you can even contemplate going live on YouTube but much like other platforms YouTube are forever updating their T's and C's so what you really need to do is get on YouTube if you haven't got an account already create that try to upload some good content regularly so you can really build your subscription base and hopefully if you can get a thousand subscribers in a short amount of time doing a live stream will actually be quite amazing for you so definitely try get a thousand subscribers or worst case scenario you've got Facebook and you've got Instagram and you've got loads of other ones that you can look into as well deciding the premise and when we say premise we mean the theme the type what kind of life are you gonna have typically most artists most people on Instagram and whatnot they will have either live performances or Q&A sessions but realistically they do not have to be that predictable for example something that I do personally on my own live I have something that I do every Wednesdays at 9 p.m. and it's called let's talk about us where we talk about different injustices in the world talk about some some really deeper topics but we also get onto some lighter topics and the cool thing about the show is it's an hour long it's from 9 till 10 and it's specifically about people it's nothing to do with me I'm bringing my audience into it I'm getting people that typically don't go on live to come on live and talk with me I'm getting people that do go on live to talk with me so we're bringing great content but on top of that we're allowing people to have a debate that everyone can relate to so even though I create music and even though I do videos I sometimes take the topic away from what I typically do so people can see a different side of of me and also see the full picture but if you're doing live performances or rehearsal there is literally nothing wrong with going on Facebook live or Instagram live and doing a live show but why not tweak it why not change it why not do a practice session why not do a cover request why not do unreleased music that people haven't heard yet and start testing the waters with it I feel like the opportunity is endless and what you can always do is just ask the audience what do you want to hear from me on the next live what do you want me to do what do you like from me why are you here every week why are you here every month why do you listen to my music what would you like me to do because at the end of the day you're making and creating for those people so if you know what they want it's so much easier to kind of build and get more like-minded people onto the wave you know what I mean and the same really goes for Q&A's do not be afraid to be original be different find different ways to engage with your crowd and your audience and do not be afraid to mention the commenters names interact with them get them on live talk to them see how they feel big them up ask them to do things like share jump in comment fire emojis whatever it might be because it's all about engagement if you can build engagement and create really good Good content you're just gonna build your fan base it's that simple and maybe you haven't been able to create any content outside of music then talk about the music talk about how you made it promote the single but do it in a fun way get people to talk about their best line and their favorite line and why then you explain why you wrote that line and what it meant to you and where it came from and and where you wrote it and what you was thinking allow people to come inside the mind of the artist the band member the musician two other things that you can try during the live is tutorials and listening sessions tutorials are really interesting simply because a lot of fans a lot of support have their favorite artists do something say something play something in a way that they would love to attempt or try or would have even tried and failed at so if you have any idea what that might be of yours it'll be cool to do a tutorial on it and showing them for example how you play a riff on a guitar a certain way a certain melody in one of your productions and how you made it what sound it came from how you did it a lyric that you rapped or sang that was a little bit different it's like people really want to know a slogan something that you say all the time and it's new for example I say oh my gosh I just do it you know what I mean so for example these are the kind of things that you can touch on and give advice to people and show them tutorials on how they could do that like I said another thing you can do is a listening party so you can literally set the scene like I said you got your lighting set up you got things in the background looking cool you got posters you got signs telling people to do something subliminally like go check this out or go over there or hear some merch you got your PA system set up you got your camera set up and you're ready to go and just touching on what we just said for example you could share old music old bangers or new music you could show music 
that's unreleased. You can show a remix or a version of a song that never actually came out. You could break it down. Obviously, we're in a space that we are in the world right now. You can do a full set of some music that was meant to come out or that came out, but you never had the opportunity to perform live. Perform it live online instead. Maybe you take them through different understandings of the song. You mix the tutorial with the live session. You perform a song, and when you perform this song, in between that, you're letting them know, okay, listen, I made this when I was this age, and this is what it meant to me. At the end of the day, this content, everything that you're creating can get repurposed. So you can reuse it. You can make this 40 minute live into seven posts for the next seven days. For anyone who didn't want to watch the live because of the length, they can take it in smaller doses and then they've actually watched the whole thing. Going live with other artists and influencers. So not only will your supporters receive a notification saying that you're going live, but if you're going live with someone else, their supporters will receive a notification that you're going live. And if they've got a thousand followers, or a million followers, they're gonna all see that you're on live. That is a great way to show a first impression also. That first impression will determine if people will click your name and follow you. So if you do go live with someone that you've never been live with before and you're promoting something, talking about something, put your best foot forward. And what you do on your joint live is definitely up to you and your guest. But I think it's always good to have some kind of communication in the sense of a dual performance, something where you're both kind of taking turns or, or you're going back and forth and you kind of work with an idea and getting their fans engaged on either side of your support list. Another thing you can do is simply talk music, talk about music, talk about how you met each other. Let people know why you guys are friends. Let people know why you're on the live. Break it down from start to finish. I mean, simply asking the supporters to ask you guys questions and answering them. I think that's the most easiest thing you can do and also depending on how much support you have but nothing's wrong with five people in a live and you're talking to them because that five might turn into 10, might turn into 15, it might turn into 200. It's how engaging you are and how good you are in keeping them in the story and keeping them interested to even want to follow, stay there or come back for a second time. Finding a good balance is so necessary like if you were to do a live for one or two minutes really you could just post a video that might be the better way to do it or if you was going to do a live for two, three, four hours then and show that there's another way you can kind of break it up into something else because a lot of that might be dead space, dead content, dead air. And definitely you don't want people to see that you're alive and see that you're not doing anything at all. So a good kind of space I would say is like 20 minutes to 40 minutes, maybe even an hour, hour and 20, depending on how engaging you are, what you're doing, and if it even warrants the time to be there for that long. So don't really take exactly what I'm saying as gospel because again, you know your fan base, you know what you can deliver, and it's always about a trial and error, just giving a little test and see what happens. So give it a go, check the metrics, especially if you're on something like Facebook, and you can kind of figure out what you need to do, but don't forget, things change all the time, your fan base will go up and it might go down. So work with it and try build to the best of your ability, yeah? Plan and promote ahead. Sometimes I've kind of found that spontaneous lives can sometimes do the best because no one expected it. People see it. a lot of people are bored in these times and they'll click it. And if you're doing something funny, something random, you've seen something crazy and you need to just show people, what better time to just show people live what's happening right now. So if you've got some really good eye catching, ear grabbing visuals or things or something that's happening and you want to show people and it's safe, definitely go on live let them know what's going on because even that will let Instagram's algorithm know that this person is doing something that people want to see. Let's invite more people in and then those people potentially turn into followers. But we are talking plan and promote. So it is important to try and plan when you're about to go live, whether it's the same day, the next day, in a week from now and letting people know, just promoting ahead to give people the heads up so they can find the time because realistically a live may last an hour and not everyone has an hour randomly spare. But if you tell them they will make that time, especially if they know it's important or they care enough about what you're about to show them or what you're about to do. Watch out for copyright flags. And believe me, this is a big one because a lot of the time you might want to do a cover song um, and you might want to use an instrumental or play something that's already out there and you don't have the rights for that song. I do believe there is a 90 second limit. After that 90 second, that's when things can get flagged. Your live stream may get taken down. It may get paused, blocked. And if you keep repeatedly doing this over time, your account could potentially get blocked. So do be careful when you're doing covers or playing music that you don't have the rights to. Limit the time you do it for and if you can just play original music it's going to be better for the health of your account so you stay in good standings all the time so let's talk money time to monetize so facebook recently announced plans to allow their creators to monetize and make money from the live streams and while this isn't officially in place yet but it will be in the future for now you can definitely pin your paypal cash app or venmo
Venmo so people can give you tips while you're delivering the content you're delivering as a way of payment because a lot of fans do want to support and will support but you need to remind them and ask them to do so. It's kind of important as well to understand that as things change and things grow it's always good to stay updated on the most relevant information. And a side note just to touch on there are other ways to make money through live streams. If you're getting a good amount of people on your live stream every time there's endorsements there's smaller brands there's bigger brands that may want a piece of the pie they may want you to just put something in the background they may want you to talk about something at the start of the end they may want you to mention something wear something and all these things can be monetized and you can make money from test and review and this is probably the most important part because before you actually go live it's always important to trial and error test give it a go and literally letting people know this is a test because i'm going to be going live next insert blank and then you're indirectly promoting indirectly asking them what they want and it allows you to kind of gauge what you'll need to do for the official live that you're going to do whenever that day comes so other than straightforward view count that's found on most other platforms that do live facebook has an in-depth metric system to see a little bit more know a little bit more and understand a little bit more on your current stream after your streams completed and been posted you get to see things like post performance audience engagement viewer retention and like i said in my previous video retention is very key it's about how long you keep someone on that piece of content and you even get to see clicks the reach and even negative feedback you can utilize all of these useful details by navigating to the insight tab on facebook you can then view a range of insights from your live stream videos, your normal videos and any other content that you've uploaded. So in the description below, we've got a link for you all about the metrics on Facebook, how to understand them, what they all mean and how to navigate through them to better your use of Facebook and all its supporting applications. Review and learn from all the stats that you gain after a live stream to work out what worked well and what didn't work well. And like I said, there's no shame with getting minimal viewers because what it's about really is understanding, learning, utilizing those metrics and improving each and every time you go on live so you can see the engagement grow, you can see the numbers grow, so you can see the difference between your first live stream and your most recent live stream. And I'm just hoping that you guys got a good insight. So remember, please test the waters, have something good to say or someone good to say it with. Show your fans or support or something that they haven't seen before or something that they haven't heard before. Work on looking at Facebook's Instagram sites and all their metrics on things like reach retention clicks and negative feedback and work how you can use all of that information to the best of your ability to help your engagement and your support system doing a live on any platform is all about engagement simply leaving the camera running and doing what you want to do is fine but unless you are one of the biggest artists or biggest influencers you're going to see that number dip until it gets to zero and you're not going to feel good and anyone who does pop in is going to see that and say oh i don't want to be here by myself this isn't facetime you know what I mean? And another side note from me, when you start your live stream, even if nobody's there for the first five minutes and you plan to stay there for an hour, for 20 minutes, and you know you're gonna do that, so you're not gonna leave, you're not gonna come back, but you wanna do that. From the moment that live stream starts, you need to be engaging, talking, saying things, because people will see and sometimes they may not stay because nothing's happening. So you have to keep them engaged even when they're not there, because then they will stay once they land. So for example, the live stream starts. What's good people, it's myself Vito, how you feeling? We're here enjoying myself. Today we're gonna talk about some real cool stuff. Listen, I got some new music to show you and I cannot wait to show you. I'm gonna give you a little, I'm gonna give you a little clip. Here it, you ready? I don't know if you, you know what, I'm gonna hold on to that. In fact, let me play that clip and you play a little bit of clip. So I've just gone in and out of live stream mode like real quick, but it's that simple, it's that easy to do. And you'll do that until people start coming in. When people start coming in, you talk to them, you say, hey, Hey Harry, hey Sarah, you big them up, you mention their names, you let them know how important they are and that you need them to stay there and that you care that they're there. They might even just leave their phone for a little bit while they do what they gotta do and I just see, ah, oh, is this getting interesting? It looks like it's getting interesting. Before you know it, your numbers start racking up but always have something to talk about. I would say if you're doing a long live, have three main points that you're gonna run through. That way if it's short, it's still got a good amount of meat and if it's long, it just means you've expanded on your topics. So from me, Vital and the little team, love and respect I'm gonna need you guys to like absolutely subscribe right there hit that notification bell so you don't miss a single video comment and I'll catch you on the next one more love